Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Calvin Taylor, and this is uh, So Gap presents Calvin Taylor. Today, I am with the SCP presidential nominee. In case you don't know what SCP, that is a Socialist Equality Party. Uh, Joseph Kishore, thanks for uh, joining me today, uh, Mr. Kishore. Hi. Uh, yes. Thanks uh, for having me. Happy to be here. Uh, now, I have just started to know what uh, the SCP is. I've uh, watched uh, quite a few of your uh, interviews and uh, your lectures and um, other things in regards to the SCP and what, what, is there, what it's around for and uh, the um, mission, I guess. Uh, well, first of all, I didn't realize that uh, a political party would have like a Congress of sorts, but apparently you guys are... Uh, worldwide, not just in the United States, right? Uh, well, the Socialist Equality Party in the United States is a, is a U.S.-based uh, party, but we're part of an international movement, uh, the International Committee of the Fourth International, uh, and uh, we publish the World Socialist website, wsws.org. Um, yeah, but we are, we're part of an international movement, and internationalism and an international perspective is really at the center and heart of, of all of our politics. Okay. Uh, well, how did you get involved in it? How did I, I get involved? Well, I, I joined the Socialist Equality Party uh, in the year 2000, uh, so 20 years now. Um, I was uh, politically radicalized around the time of the uh, Kosovo War uh, and was uh, uh, really trying to understand what was the cause of war not just uh, you know to protest war, but to understand what it, what it came out of, uh, and what I came to understand was that through reading the uh, World Socialist website and uh, meetings I attended at the time that that war is a product of of capitalism, uh, of a social and economic system which is subordinate to the interests of the uh, ruling class, the corporate and financial elite. Uh, and that it has to be opposed through the development of a movement against uh, capitalism. Uh, but war is one particular expression uh, or, or a horrific product of, of a capitalist society. All the great problems confronting mankind, the social inequality, dictatorship, uh, environmental degradation uh, are rooted in the, in the capitalist system. Uh, and have to be opposed through the development of a movement of the working class against capitalism. And, uh, in your opinion, and if you were to be elected president, uh, how would you, uh, what kind of policies would you uh, implement to stop all the havoc that capitalism has created on the world at large? Mm -hmm. uh, well, first of all, it's, uh, I don't think it's just, a, it's a question simply or really even primarily of uh, the election itself. Uh, uh, of course, if I were to be elected president, I would fight for socialist uh, policies. But we see the uh, development of a socialist movement as bound up with the growth of the class struggle, of the interference of the masses into historical events uh, through, the, through the class struggle, through social protests, uh, through the development of a a revolutionary movement uh, in the working class in the United States and, and internationally to take power in its own hands uh, and to restructure a social and economic life in its interests. Mm. Uh, and that's what we are, you know, we, we are running in the elections. Uh, my running mate, Nerissa Santa Cruz and I, uh, we are uh, trying to get on the ballot in the states where we can, uh, although that uh, has become uh, very difficult due, the, due to the pandemic. Uh, and rulings in Michigan and California uh, and uh, other states, which essentially require us to gather thousands and thousands of signatures just to get on the ballot in the midst of a, a deadly pandemic. Um, but we are, we are, which we could perhaps speak about a bit more, but we are, uh, you know, we are fighting to, to get on the ballot and we want people to vote for us, including through write-in if we are uh, not on the ballot. Uh, but our uh, orientation is towards, as I said, the development of a, um, a, a movement in the working class and uh, the growth of the class struggle, which I think is the period that we are in. We're in a period of, of really explosive social upheavals. 
you know, what outlets uh, have you been able to uh, get on in order to uh, spread spread your message? Uh, I mean, not any mainstream uh, type of news or any kind of anything, anything like, like that. But, uh, uh, just, uh, but, Oh, well, I, the, the mainstream news is, you know, is set up to exclude any genuine opposition to the two parties of the, of the ruling class. Uh, and uh, now I haven't been interviewed in, in the, the mainstream news. Uh, there's, you know, there's been a number of uh, blog interviews and, and other things like this. Uh, I would say our, our primary means of uh, uh, popularizing our election campaign and fighting for this program has been the World Socialist website, uh, which is the uh, most widely read socialist publication on the internet. Uh, it's read by thousands and thousands of workers, and we're fighting to develop the WSWS as the voice of the working class uh, as it uh, develops its own political consciousness and understanding. Uh, the workers will turn to the World Socialist website as the uh, the scaffolding and, and uh, of a of a movement of the working class uh, and the real genuine expression of the interests of the working class. Well, I appreciate uh, that you're on my network uh, and you will always be welcomed on my network. Uh, uh, you and pretty much anybody that is representative of the SCP, uh, or I mean, to be. Uh, totally transparent. Uh, this network is for all leftists and socialists, as far as uh, parties are that side. I, I, I think I have interviewed one um, progressive, and that that person is is a cool person, but I don't agree with their with, with uh, where they're at politically. So it's all good as far as that part goes. But uh, I will always keep a a. Um, time for SEP for anything, anybody socialist uh, or anything that is a uh, non-mainstream uh, or establishment uh, parties especially in the right or even middle because they are the reason why we are we are in the habit we are in now right now well I think just on that point if I could speak to it I think that uh, one uh, issue to understand is the the differences between uh, organizations that uh, call themselves socialists. Uh, and there are significant political differences. Um, if you one takes, for example, the Democratic Socialists of America, uh, which uh, has the term socialist in its name, uh, the DSA really functions, it, it is a, a faction of the Democratic Party. Uh, the DSA uh, has centered its political activity uh, on the campaign of uh, Bernie Sanders. Uh, and as we've seen in the course of the past, I think of the past six months, although this is really bound up with his political role for over a long period of time, uh, the, the function of the Sanders campaign has been to direct social anger behind the Democratic Party, uh, one of the two parties of the ruling class and to campaign now very, very aggressively for uh, Joe Biden. Uh, there were many socialist, supposedly so-called socialist uh, organizations that uh, really promoted Sanders as the instrument or vehicle for uh, real social transformation. And we opposed that. And we said that, you know, Sanders did not represent the growing leftward movement of, of workers and youth. Rather, his aim was to uh, divert and channel that behind the Democratic Party. I think that's what was seen as, as actually happened. Uh, and the more th the election goes on, the more the anger of workers, uh, the more uh, insistently Sanders uh, tries to prop up uh, the Democratic Party and the Biden campaign in particular. So would, that, so would you say the same thing about the SPUSA? Uh, yeah, yes, yes. Um, in one form or another, you know, the Socialist Party USA as well, uh, they... Um, uh, well, the SPUSA is uh, presently, I believe, I don't know if they've endorsed the Green Party. They actually, uh, they, they, uh, actually Howie Hawkins uh, has won their, uh, their nomination. Yeah, and Apparently. he's a member of the SPUSA as, as is yeah. the vice president. Yeah, uh, and, it, I'm sorry, I, I, I was told uh, 
by Andrew Walker, his uh, his uh, running mate, that apparently they can do that despite the uh, rules in the Green Party. Uh, that because I guess the U uh, SPUSA is not on the voters block or some to that effect, uh, they can eff effectively nominate a, uh, a Green Party candidate. But I, I yeah, that's what I was told anyway. Well, the Green Party um, has, uh, you know, the Green Party operates outside of the Democratic Party, but it really has, over a long period of time, uh, functioned as sort of an auxiliary uh, external pressure group on the Democratic Party. So kind of uh, a default. I, sorry? So kind of a default party? Yeah, I think sort of a, I would say it's something of a, of a political catchment outside of the Democratic Party, but oriented to the Democratic Party. If you actually listen to what Hawkins says, uh, he often talks about, uh, you know, that when he, he's on the ballot, he says that uh, the Democrats win. Uh, and, you know, first of all, he, he is uh, completely uncritical of, of Sanders. Uh, he presents his own campaign as a continuation of the Sanders so-called political a revolution, that it's going to be the instrument for realizing uh, what Sanders was trying to do in the Democratic Party. Uh, and it, um, you know, but he, he, he then, and this was, you know, this has actually really always been the, the line of the, the Green Party, that somehow, you know, by having an outside party, you're going to push the Democrats to the left and force yeah. them to adopt policies of a more left-wing character because there's the Green Party. And I think that's a, that's a political fiction. Yeah. Um, I think it's also important to study the international experience of the Green Party. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, and, and actually, not, not to interrupt you, but I've I've, uh, okay. I've extended the olive branch to a certain degree to the uh, international version of not only the ISA but also the Green Party International, UK, Germany, and other uh, countries as well, not just one here. I just I, I just only I only had access to people here in the United States as far as the Green Party goes. Yeah, well, the, I would say the experience in Germany was particularly uh, significant because the Green Party, perhaps of any country, the Green Party in Germany uh, advanced most uh, uh, to the highest uh, levels of political power. Uh, it emerged, I think, in the, the late 60s and then into the 70s. And, uh, you know, it pre presented itself, of course, as an environmental-based party as well as a party opposed to war. Uh, when Joschka Fischer, the head of the Green Party, became foreign minister in Germany in a coalition government with the Social Democrats in the 1990s, uh, he actually uh, oversaw the, uh, uh, the first, uh, um, the late 90s and then into the 2000s, I have to look again, I'm sorry, uh, that he oversaw the first foreign military intervention uh, of Germany since the Second World War. Uh, and they really completely abandoned their anti-war pretenses. The, the Green Party in Germany has floated coalition uh, agreements with the with the right wing uh, Free Democratic Party on the basis of you know uh, extreme pro-capitalist measures. Uh, so the Green Party, where it has because it's not it, it's not based on opposition to capitalism. Uh, in class terms, I would say that the Green Party is a, a capitalist party. Uh, which uh, in a petty bourgeois capitalist party, its traditional orientation has been to layers of the of small businesses, local politics, and that sort of thing. But it doesn't really have uh, real independence from the, the capitalist parties, which is expressed in its orientation to the Democratic Party, and from capitalism as a whole. Uh, okay, and so it's I'm not. Gonna, so are you saying the Green Party as a whole is kind of like? Um... This, the sidekick of sorts of the Democratic Party, or and th depending on the the country, the right wing or the or, or capitalist parties. Yeah, I think sidekick is a good is a good term. <laughs> uh, you know, I think uh, th there's a lot which there, there's a lot of different political tendencies that work to uh, uh, channel opposition, uh, and they're well aware of the growth of, of political radicalism the growing interest in socialism. Uh, and they serve consciously or unconsciously in terms of the individuals involved, but they serve uh, to try to uh, contain that and prevent it from developing into a revolutionary movement against capitalism. 
so you have like the the well the ISO dissolved itself last year the International Socialist Organization. Oh. Um, they. Um, That's they, uh, me. I'm sorry. I had no idea about that one. Yeah, yeah, they, they dissolved, they essentially dissolved themselves into the DSA, the leading members of the ISO uh, ended up being- Oh, uh, okay, that, that'll explain why the, the web, when I've gone out to the, DS, the DSA website and, and, and try to go with the ISA, it goes back into the DSA. Okay, that explains that. Uh, but, um, you know, there's, there's a lot that the, the ISO used to endorse, uh, you know, the Green Party candidates and then, um, you know, it's, it serves as sort of, and, and actually what happened now, what the Green Party is seeking to do in relationship to the present election is that all the supposed socialist groups that uh, had backed Sanders, now that Sanders is uh, openly backing Biden, their line is, well, you should now support the Green Party. It serves something as a, a halfway house, I would argue, between, you know, sort of open endorsement of the Democratic Party, because they're concerned that, you know, by, if they came out openly, said, oh, well, we are uh, backing Biden, it would politically discredit them because of how right-wing Biden uh, is. Uh, that's, of course, what Sanders himself is doing. He's openly supporting uh, Biden. All the organizations that had backed Sanders are effectively in supporting Biden because the, the candidate that they declared was leading the political revolution is now Biden's greatest cheerleader. Uh, but then they say, well, all right, well, we're going to endorse the, the Green Party. But it, uh, it's something of a, uh, as I said, a, something of a halfway house. It, uh, the, the, the end result is, is, is inevitably the orientation to the Democratic Party. In any case, I would just uh, stress that the Socialist Equality Party has a, a different political conception. Uh, our, as I said, our orientation is to the development, the intervention of the working class into politics. And in particular under, this, under these conditions of the expanding coronavirus pandemic, which is spiraling out of control as a product of the policies uh, of the ruling class, spearheaded by Trump, but implemented by Democrats and Republicans. It is an absolute catastrophe. You have a massive social crisis, tens of millions of people unemployed. Uh, you have the, you know, there's the drive back to work. I'm sorry, back to, to reopen the schools that Trump is spearheading and growing opposition among teachers. There's, there's a, a, a mass anger among auto workers and Amazon workers and service workers, other sections of the working class over the, uh, the impact of the pandemic, the social crisis. That social force, the working class in the United States and internationally uh, has to be organized and mobilized uh, independently. Uh, and we're fighting for the development of a, uh, a mass movement uh, in that social force, in the, in the working class. So our orientation is not, in a sense, towards the electoral political system, uh, that somehow, you know, we're going to get changed by electing local officials here or there, or, uh, or you know, uh, uh, get, getting elected to this state apparatus. Our orientation is towards the uh, development of a movement uh, in the working class, based on a socialist uh, and revolutionary program. Well, uh, have you uh, seen, uh, say, membership uh, climb uh, in any uh, in, in, in recently? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, the readership of the World Socialist website is growing. Uh, the membership uh, of the uh, Socialist Equality Party is growing. Um, it's uh, it's an expression of the political movement. Uh, of workers and youth to the left, uh, the you know growing opposition to the whole political system. Uh, we've certainly seen a, a growing interest in our in our party. Yes. Well, that's good as far as that part goes. Uh, I first of all, I, I do have to mention one thing. Um, every interview I've seen you do, and it's kind of a funny trademark in my, in my mind as far as uh, your interviews, is you always like in the middle of it grab some grab some to drink. <laughs> so, 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 when I saw that, I kind of remember all the interviews I saw you do, and all, that, and then, then you grabbed one. Okay, that was kind of funny as far as the trademark in my mind. That was all, <laughs> but I figured I at least bring it up in a, in a uh, comedic conversation part. That's all. <laughs> well, I get thirsty while I'm speaking. Oh, of course, of course, we all do. Yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, what? Uh, what? 
did you uh, explain earlier what the uh, origination of the SVP Congress was, or or have I not asked, asked that question? Oh, yet? you mentioned no. Yeah, you mentioned the Congress. Uh, yes, we published a resolution from our Congress, which is available on the World Socialist website. Uh, we have Congresses uh, every two years um, in which uh, the membership participates, and we discuss our political perspective, elect the leadership of the party. Uh, and uh, uh, adopt resolutions. So we just completed okay, our. So, so kind of like a conference of sorts, but not in a uh, Congress state, or I mean, I mean, Congress setting. I mean. Yeah, a Congress. Political parties have Congresses. It's a uh, you know the gathering of the membership. Okay. Uh, okay. Now I understand as far as that part goes. Um, as a selfish note, uh, uh, have you guys looked at any of the um, links I've sent you to uh, tweet? Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, to tweet? Yeah, well, uh, I, I, in your Twitter inbox. I, I've sent you a... Uh, yeah, yeah, I've seen, I've seen what you've sent, yeah. I was, I was asking that because uh, in, I call them kind of rants on Facebook Live, and I'll be doing one after this. Um, I mentioned that uh, people need to wake up and see uh, that Democrats and Republicans both, right now, at the, at the time I was speaking, uh, are the two-headed turd that needs to be um, flushed. And they need to think of their pocketbooks uh, before their politics. The two-party system um, is the reason why we're in this uh, way in the first place. The way uh, Donald Trump has acted, the way that Biden is acting now and has acted in the past, and other Democratic uh, candidates and other Democratic uh, representatives, as well as Republican representatives, have all acted on the wishes of their of the people who pay them, not the not their constituents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I uh, I agree with you. I mean, they are they're representative of they're, they represent the, the ruling class, the capitalist class, both the Democrats and Republicans. I mean, if, obviously, there's a lot of pressure um, in this election as. Uh, as in other elections, but I think particularly in this election, you know, there's a lot of pressure, which is uh, being, you know, that you have to vote for Biden in order to get rid of Trump. Uh, yeah, and, or, yeah, or the other way around, or, you know, yeah. yeah. Uh, but obviously there's a lot of, there's, there's enormous hatred of, of Trump and, and justified. Trump is, you know, he, he, he personifies all that is backward, filthy, criminal, uh, in the American ruling class, you know this this buffoon billionaire buffoon with a fascistic mindset. Uh, so and, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's true. That's true. Uh, uh, well, they represent sort of different factions of the corporate and financial. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but well, yeah, so well, there, there is. Yeah, I'm sorry. But sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, it, it, it's really not mine. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I just to, to complete the thought, I was just going to say that you know there's a lot of pressure and and. You know, but it it, uh, it really ignores where what Trump came out of. You know, he doesn't he doesn't just speak for himself. He, he's a, he's the vomiting up of the of all its uh, you know, corrupt and uh, bankrupt in, in capitalism, uh, and the Democratic Party bears responsibility for that. And the whole right wing policy of the Democratic Party created the conditions in which Trump uh, came to power. So it's a very pragmatic sort of response. Oh well, we have to vote for the Democratic Party. Well, what are you going to get? You know, because Biden. You know, is committed to a policy of, of militarism and, uh, and and social reaction, uh, and that's what he'll implement if he's elected. By the way, I apologize for the language I, I had used previously in regards to the two-party system. In case you know, anybody was listening and like um, easily offended, <laughs> no. and and I wasn't trying to disrespect you in in cussing in that way either. So I apologize for that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is, is quite all right. I was not offended. I think it's it's an it's an apt analogy. <laughs> uh, see, um, oh, uh, now you mentioned that you may or may not uh, the party may or may not try to get other candidates to run. Um, you mean in local elections and that sort yes. of thing? Yes. Yes. Uh, we run and we will continue to run uh, for for local elections uh, if uh, you know we we think that there's an opportunity to use the election campaign to fight for a program. Um, you know, as, as we grow, we will run in other offices. The point I was making is, and you know, we'll seek to win. Uh, the point I was making though, is that we don't see the, 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 the source of uh, social change and revolution 
uh, to be uh, through simply the election of uh, individuals to the existing state apparatus. The state as a whole is an instrument of class rule. Uh, it, you know, it's not a sort of neutral arbiter. You see that in the police violence. I mean, the police are an instrument of class rule, yeah. an instrument of the state. Uh, and so, you know, our orientation is to the development of a movement in the working class against the whole framework of the political system to, for establishment of a genuinely democratic uh, political uh, system uh, that will take control over the whole process of production and, and create conditions in which the working class can control the economy uh, democratically uh, on the basis of social need. Hmm. Uh, have you... Uh... Have you ever just wanted to run for, for an office, or uh, do you think that you were uh, you were put in this position in order to be like the best way of uh, furthering the message? Do, are you asking me personally if I've ever wanted to run for office? Both prof uh, professionally and personally, if you want, if you want to look at it both ways. Uh, you know, it's uh, I don't know. That it's it's something that I thought I would uh, necessarily be doing when I when I first came into politics. Uh, but um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a, uh, uh, it's a form to which we're fighting for a political program. And that's what, uh, um, you know, I've, I've uh, decided, you know, committed myself to as, as a member of the Socialist Equality Party. Uh, and we're, we're gonna, we're gonna fight for it. And uh, could uh, you, but I don't know if that quite answers your question, but uh, Oh, as, as well as as well as it could, I, I suppose, on a, in a from an honesty point of view, of course. Um, no, I, I was gonna, I was going to ask. Uh, now, was there any uh, specific um, policy that, other than uh, getting getting people together to realize the the current system is no good and should go more or less with the the socialist uh, uh, way of doing things to a certain degree? Uh, are there any specific programs we want to implement if, say, enough um, of your party, uh, Tadis, or people representing your party uh, would want to implement? Well, I would say that a, a real center of our campaign now is the fight for the development of independent organizations of working class struggle, rank and file committees uh, through which the workers can fight for their interests. Uh, we just issued a statement uh, a couple of days ago calling for the preparation of a nationwide general strike uh, against the plans to reopen the schools under conditions of the expanding uh, pandemic uh, in which we urged uh, and called upon teachers to form uh, rank and file committees uh, to carry out such a fight, to reach out to other sections of the working class, uh, auto workers, Amazon transit, meatpacking workers, service workers, but uh, the, wor the working class really requires its own organizations to uh, mobilize, to share information, to unify its struggles in the U.S. and, and internationally. Uh, so, you know, we, we call on workers to form independent uh, organizations. The trade unions are doing nothing. They're, in fact, participating in the and enforcing the back to work campaign. Uh, the, the working class needs uh, organizations through which it can express its own interests. So we are fighting for and calling for, and, and I think this is going to be a, a more and more a central element of our election campaign, the development of a network uh, of rank and file committees uh, through which the working class can organize and unify its struggles. I mean, that's really the, cr the critical question. There's immense opposition to what is taking place, uh, but that opposition has to be unified. Uh, it has to develop its own uh, policies that the working class is fighting for. Policies that begin not with what the capitalists think is acceptable, but what the working class requires uh, for its interests. Uh, and so that, you know, these are the types of uh, policies and programs and demands that we are raising in relationship to our election campaign. And I think it will uh, get a powerful response. Well, it seems like it, um, because I think the definition of socialism, definition of communism, and definitions of capitalism, I think, have uh, effectively, uh, sorry, excuse me, uh, effectively um, been uh, either re uh, understood or, yeah, because in the past it's been misunderstood and too much propaganda uh, against it has been out. And since there's so much 
um, demand for a, a new system, people are actually paying more attention about uh, what the real meaning behind socialism and communism uh, both are instead of what how they were implemented in the past. But I think that's where uh, a lot of the uh, misinformation to a certain degree uh, came from. Uh, and I keep trying to tell people it's not the uh, system, it's the person who put it into uh, place. That is the reason for it to be failing or not failing. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I, I think this question always comes up, what is socialism? And it raises, you know, all the historical experiences of the 20th century. Uh, for, um, you know, much of the 20th century, the American ruling class used the reality of, of Stalinism and the horrific reality of Stalinism to blackguard socialism. To, to claim and both and the Stalinists themselves claimed that they represented socialism and the traditions of the Russian Revolution uh, and the American ruling class present and said this is what socialism is it's dictatorship and authoritarianism. Uh, our movement, the Socialist Equality Party, as I mentioned, is part of the International Committee of the Fourth International. The Fourth International was established in 1938 uh, under the leadership of Leon Trotsky, who was uh, the co-leader with Lenin of the Russian Revolution, uh, and Trotsky, uh, beginning in the uh, in 1923, uh, formed the Left Opposition to oppose the Stalinist degeneration of the Soviet Union uh, and the bureaucratic uh, reaction against the tradition, the national bureaucratic reaction against the traditions of the October Revolution itself. Uh, Trotsky was uh, ultimately expelled from the Communist Party, exiled, uh, and 80 years ago, uh, this coming August 20th, that is in just, uh, uh, less, just less, less than two weeks, will be the 80th anniversary of the assassination uh, of Leon Trotsky in uh, Coyoacan, Mexico, by an agent of the uh, GPU, a Stalinist agent, uh, yeah. who murdered Trotsky, as part, and that was part of the uh, uh, political reaction and political genocide uh, organized by the Stalinists against genuine socialists and uh, those who represented the internationalist revolutionary traditions uh, of the Russian Revolution itself. Uh, so that's the uh, origins of our movement and really any answer to the question, what is socialism? Uh, and opposing all the lies about what socialism is requires a a real study and understanding of what happened in the 20th century. Well, now the term bourgeoisie, that's uh, basically someone who is well to do or wealthy, is that right? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Taking my water. <laughs> uh, bourgeoisie refers to, is, is used to refer to the capitalist class, uh, that is the, the owners of the means of production. Uh, uh, those who uh, control the giant corporations and banks and who control the political system. Well, that well that does explain why so many um, celebrities or someone like Omega McCain would uh, talk down about uh, socialism and communism and all that. She is essentially a part of that same class. Who is that? Megan McCain. She's on the view. She's uh, John McCain's daughter. John McCain's daughter, yeah. Yeah. By the way, you know, when McCain died, you know, there were there were all these accolades to, to McCain, mm -hmm. who, you know, never saw a war he didn't like, yeah. uh, including from Bernie Sanders and Ocasio-Cortez, who uh, declared he was, I think Ocasio-Cortez said he was, he was a great patriot. Um, you know, this is one of those who was responsible for the Iraq war. I mean, that's the politics of the DSA, I think, in, in essence. Um, Ocasio-Cortez, of course, a member of the of the Democratic Socialists of America. Uh, yeah, but that's the ruling class, and yeah, they're 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 opposed, terrified of the the development of a socialist movement. Trump, of course, talks denounces socialism every time he can, uh, but I would say the Democratic Party is no less terrified of the growth of a socialist movement in the working class. Yeah, I, I have been basically saying that the only difference between the two is one is better at fundraising than the other. Which one is better? The more, right now, the Republicans are because they, I think, I think Donald Trump had like seven million dollars or some such effect uh, in the bank, while I think the DNC has a total of what four or five million dollars in the bank. 
uh, I think thanks to Obama, they uh, they were they went bankrupt uh, because of his uh, second run as uh, his re-election campaign. According to them, I don't know. <laughs> you know the, I've, never, I've never seen the actual paperwork. I don't know. Yeah, you know there are there are political differences between I would say the Democrats and Republicans. Uh, they represent different factions of the of the financial oligarchy of the ruling class. They have different political strategies. Uh, but it's not, there's no democratic or progressive uh, faction. I mean, the Democrats over the past three and a half years have focused their, all of their opposition to Trump on their anti-Russia campaign because they have been concerned that the Trump administration has not pursued a, a sufficiently aggressive policy against Russia, uh, that he uh, did not pursue a, a, a sufficiently aggressive policy in the Middle East, uh, in Syria, the CIA was particularly concerned about uh, Trump's policy in, in Syria. Uh, Trump has tended to focus more on the conflict with China. Uh, so there are sort of difference, differences uh, centered on questions of foreign policy. Uh, there's also sort of tactical differences in terms of, uh, you know, the political, you know, the, the Democrats really focus on the politics of racial and gender identity, uh, uh, you know, and that, uh, is a, a sort of a framework both for dividing the working class and also advancing the interests of uh, uh, privileged sections of the upper middle class and among minority populations. <laughs> Trump, of course, pursues a really fascistic uh, policy of, uh, you know, uh, re extreme nationalism, anti-immigrant chauvinism. So they have different sort of tactical uh, uh, and sort of political uh, orientations in that sense, but they uh, they speak for the same class. Uh, they're different factions of the same class. And when it comes down to basic elements of class policy, uh, they're united. Biden gave an interview the other day. He said, you know, I'm not going to uh, continue building Trump's wall uh, on the border. He said, I, I won't tear down what Trump has already built. I'm just not going to continue building the wall. But instead of building the wall, we're going to increase security by, through high-tech measures like drones and cameras and sensors and all, and all that. In other so words, a wall by another name, you know. So basically, what's the he would, so basically he would do what, what Hillary Clinton do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. the Democratic Party. They're, they're both just as corrupt. Uh, I sometimes I'll say thank you to Trump only because the fact he is so outwardly corrupt that it makes the corruption of DNC all of that more transparent. Mm. So, <laughs> so I, I think that both parties just need to go period and more of a uh, socialist uh, to, uh, to the people who watch this if they do, uh, uh, of the uh, European nations and uh, leftists as far as the United States goes. I was I was kind of talked to on Facebook about, uh, about using the word leftist. Apparently, it's like a Republican of sorts in say Belgium. So, like, okay, that's why I put socialist part in my in the name of my network. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. well, we we're building a socialist movement. Uh, yes, uh, I wouldn't say of the social of the European variety. If you look at actually what is happening in in Europe, if you're referring to social democracy in Europe. Uh, all the so, so, supposedly socialist parties, whether it's a socialist party in France or a social democratic party in Germany or the Labour Party in uh, England, uh, you know, they're all, they've all moved very, very sharply to the right. They're really capitalist parties. They themselves speak for a faction for the, uh, for the ruling class. Uh, implemented austerity measures, the social democratic party is referring to the coalition they had with the Green Party. The social democratic party uh, is the has been the spearhead for dismantling uh, reform social reforms in in Germany. Um, you know the so-called Scandinavian model has has collapsed. Uh, we are building a, a a socialist movement modeled uh, on on the real revolutionary traditions of of Marxism, uh, the Russian Revolution. Uh, the great uh, so revolutionary socialist uh, uh, traditions in the working class, including here in the United States, uh, that's the uh, uh, the model of, of the type of socialist movement that we're fighting to build. Oh, and I've, I've been trying to get your uh, your VP nominee uh, for an interview as well, but uh, she hasn't uh, 
she maybe she's still too busy to uh to either reply via email or some uh, some else is going on as far as that part goes. But we'd love to interview your uh, your VP uh, nominee and basically anybody in the so in the uh, SEP that is willing to uh, be interviewed. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll follow up on that. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let, let people know that there's a, a new uh, network in town if, if, if you were. Okay. <laughs> so, oh. yeah. Uh, now, do, do you guys have any, you guys don't sell merchandise, right? Uh, we don't have merchandise for sale at the moment. Uh, we, we will, we, we may as part of the election campaign. You can okay. find out more about us at uh, going to the socialism2020.org, which is our election website, uh, or to the World Socialist website, wsws.org. Now, if, if I were to come up with like a shirt or something like that, with, uh, with, uh, would, would I be allowed to use an SEP logo on it, or should I be asking someone else? Uh, why, don't, why don't you send me a message? We can talk about it. Okay, just double checking. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, <laughs> I should probably let you go and continue uh, continue doing your good work. Uh, oh, actually, uh, do you have any? Um, no, I was just taking notes on. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was just taking notes on my uh, computer. Uh, no worries. Uh, do you have any events coming up? Uh, Zoom events, that is. Uh, online events will be announcing shortly. Keep keep posted on the World Socials uh, website. We'll be announcing a, a, an event shortly. Oh, I always do. And That's all actually, I can say. Uh, the uh, the pandemic uh, article uh, that was out a, a day or so ago, and the um, well, basically anything that is relevant to today's uh, today's system, I, I tend to uh, um, I tend to cut and paste and uh, share the crap out of. So uh, mm -hmm. you, yeah, you got me on your side, basically on that one. Good, thank you. Very welcome. Anyway, so yes, I will get, I will get back to you uh, on Twitter about about the uh, merchandise part. Um, Okay, Let's see. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to add to this proceedings? Uh, no, it was a interesting discussion. I would, I would just, yeah, anyone who's listening, uh, find out more about us uh, by going to the World Socialist website. Uh, and if you agree with with what we're doing, sign up and, and get involved. Right on. Well, uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, I look forward to talking to you again in the future, and hopefully to your uh, your VP and uh, everybody else that's involved in either the campaign or the um, the party as a whole. Uh, especially uh, the David North is is, is that the uh, the director? Uh, he, he's the national chairperson of the Socialist Equality Party. Yes, and the uh, chairman of the International Editorial Board of the World Socialist website. Because I've been I, I've also been trying to get him too. So. Uh, Anyway. Well, I can I can follow up and see if uh, if there's anyone else who can who can come on. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, and uh, I'll come back to you in a few months or so and ask if you would like to join me again. Great. I'm sure we'll have a lot to talk about then. Of course. Thanks for joining me. Okay. Thanks for thanks for having me. Enjoyed it. My pleasure. <laughs> have a good day. You too. Bye.